Good evening, everybody, and a very warm welcome to tonight's webinar on the Fathering Project. The title of tonight's webinar is Transitioning into Fatherhood with Confidence, and we are very happy to welcome Stephen Kennedy, the founder of Birthing Dads, and a writer of a wide range of content around this subject from his own first-hand experience. But before we get started, I'd just like to go through a few housekeeping notes. You'll see that you have a chat bar and that will allow you across the webinar to send us any questions you have of the speaker tonight. Just simply use the chat bar, send your question, and we will review and post your question in the Q&A session. Tonight, the format will be around 30 minutes with the webinar, and then we've allowed 30 minutes for your question and answers, closing the line sharply at 8.30 p.m. tonight. But firstly, let me thank Stephen for sharing his experiences after the birth of his son, which resulted in many challenges that moved him to look for more information around the experiences of expectant fathers at birth. He found that there was a total lack of content and real support materials for dads-to-be, and he found he couldn't ignore the fact that there was good material needed for men, and he started researching, working with expectant fathers through a number of foundations and volunteered for charities, including the Fathering Project. He founded Birthing Dads to raise awareness of the positive impact that a supportive parent a partner can have in the perinatal health if they themselves are supported and informed. So a writer, a director, and award-winning actor in theatre and television, we welcome Stephen tonight and we thank him for shining a light on a very important fathering subject. Over to you, Stephen. Thank you for that warm, warm welcome there, Liz, and uh, welcome everyone. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge the Darawa people of the Illawarra region, uh, upon whose traditional uh, lands these, this recording is taking place. I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Secondly, congratulations to all of the expectant dads that are tuning in. Uh, very exciting times. And I hope you, and any expectant mums, of course, <laughs> You're more than welcome here, and uh, and thanks for tuning in. And hopefully, you'll get some you know some good messages out of this. So, finally, uh, just on opening, I'd like to uh, just say that Birthing Dads as an organisation, we support a model of care uh, that's called woman-centred, family-focused care. So that's that's basically saying that all of our work is is focused in on the woman in the perinatal period. And the family-focused element is about trying to support dads so they can put, support themselves and therefore their families. So, so let's get get started. So this little uh, short webinar will will basically be about uh, trying to build confidence uh, and and talk about how you can do that as an expectant dad, but also about building confidence in your partner. Uh, it's about how you can make a positive impact during the perinatal period. Now, the perinatal period uh, spans the period from conception through to about one year old. So I'm gonna do a little bit of introduction and then we'll talk about pregnancy support. I'll talk a little bit about birth support and we'll talk some, uh, some tips on early fatherhood, but recognizing that this is actually uh, about supporting your partner and baby, these elements. So I also wanna talk about how important it is to support yourself during this time. So this is the first photo photograph I took of my son in 2017 when he was born via emergency caesarean. And he was born with a, an APGAR score of one. Now the APGAR score is as a measure of the health of a newborn baby. And uh, 10 is the best and one is, is pretty unhealthy. So it was an emergency and it came over the loudspeaker and the room flooded with medical professionals and they had to resuscitate him. And, and that experience left me kind of shocked and, and traumatized. And, um, and I, I had a little bit of postnatal depression myself and as one in 10 men do. And at that point, I was trying to explain to myself what was going on for me. Uh, it was a bit of a shock and I started researching and I looked into midwifery journals, obstetrics, anthropology, social sciences, those kind of things, just to try and find out what was going on. And I found that our birth culture is essentially in a bit of a crisis state. 
There's a lot of people who are really fearful of it, particularly dads, first time dads, most importantly, you know, there's a lot of apprehension there. And, and I found that um, the worldwide academic research had been recording that some men are really struggling with the perinatal period. And these feelings are just lifted straight from, from papers about how dads are feeling. And when it comes to the birth situation, we as guys, we bottle it up because there's nowhere to process those. In general, we bottle up all of our feelings, right? Uh, but I'm trying to change that. But, but particularly in the birth, birth space, because you know our partners have had a significant experience. But, but what I like to say is that that doesn't make our experience of birth insignificant, particularly if there's been some kind of situation that has been hard to handle. Often we're watching our partner and worried about them and baby, and it can be really challenging. So, so I started to work towards trying to change that. And so if we had a fundamental starting point as blokes, we want to make it a positive experience and a mem positive memory for our families, right? Uh, and so if we break that down a little bit, what does that, what does that actually mean? So we're aiming to, to get satisfaction and fulfillment out of the perinatal period rather than disappointment, shame and sadness. And it, it, in order to even break that down further, you want to be able to say to yourself, well, I was there when she needed me. Uh, you know, we, we both prepared well, we communicated well, we worked together as a team and that way, you know, at, regardless of the birth outcome, you can come away satisfied and fulfilled because you've actually given it the best shot you possibly could. Uh, so if, if we were to break it down again, the level of your positive impact as an expectant dad is directly related to how involved you become during the pregnancy, how much you investigate what you need to be doing and how supportive you are during the pregnancy. Uh, you wanna walk into that birth suite uh, with the best possible preparation state you can possibly be because there's no point in being in there and uh, you know halfway through labor just thinking oh, I wish I'd read that book or I should have taken that massage course so we should have did this we should have done that uh, you have to really prepare during pregnancy so again I, I believe there's there's active support that we can do there's also passive support so when I'm talking about active support there's things like just really being engaged and, and, and asking her constantly, what can I do for you right now? Is there anything you need? And then doing it. Um, you can try and build her confidence that she's able to birth a child, that she's gonna be a good mother. You know, these, these components are really quite range, wide ranging and the course that I'm developing will go for about five or six hours, but I'm condensing it all into half an hour here. When we're talking about uh, passive engagement, one of the main things I hear expectant mums say is, I don't want you to fix anything, just, just listen. Uh, so it's good just to you know, reassure her of your ongoing support, ask her if she needs you to do anything, but, but active listening is really, really positive and supportive and it really nurtures her state of mind. So just reassure her. And another, another passive component is, is maybe facing your fears as well. If you hold any apprehension, it's about trying to sit, sit, sit with that and, and find out where it's coming from. So I'd like to focus in on this just a little because it is a common, uh, common thing and it's totally understandable. You know, women wisdom around birth have been attending birth uh, with feminine wisdom has been going for a couple of hundred thousand years. Us guys have been attending birth for 50 years. It was in the seventies when we first started to, to do that. And so, we're still we're still learning. There's a lot of a lot of fear about it. There's a lot of fear of the unknown. But I would suggest that perhaps at a quiet moment, try and identify what your fears are. Maybe you're fearful of blood. Maybe you you're fearful of being helpless. And I'd like to tell you that there's you do your research and you will not be helpless during birth. There is so much you can do. Uh, acknowledge that fear and try and sensitively raise it with your partner and say, this is what I'm holding and I, I, you know, I want to share it with you, I want to try and process it. And also another thing is you, you, you kind of want to be able to have ways of processing it in the moment as well uh, as labour unfolds. So apprehension is, it can be met with, you know, you can get confidence out of knowledge and I would suggest if you've got some time, 
to get this book. I've read a lot of supportive like birth partner uh, books, and this is the best, without without a doubt. So I highly recommend that. Another thing you might want to look into is active labour positions. So during labour, there's these are the kind of things you can do. You can support her. You can you can you know use your body and your strength to actually hold her and and whenever she's feeling discomfort uh, in a certain position, that's when you can suggest a change. So I, I would suggest that you learn and practice these with your partner and, and try and learn which one she's into, which one she's not. Uh, but then maybe take a cheat sheet in to the room and be the one to suggest the change in position if she's feeling uncomfortable. Uh, just some quick to-dos right now, spoil her because she's pregnant and why wouldn't you? You know, this is her most vulnerable time. This is when she needs you to be really strongly connected to her. I would suggest also that you sing, hum, read to the belly, get that connection flowing with you and your child now so that it understands your voice and it can can recognise your voice. And uh, I don't know if you've seen footage, but it, you know, it's quite clear that, that babies come out recognising dad's voice. Uh, if you can help with nutrition and exercise, uh, if she's off the salamis and the soft cheese, then you know solidarity, stick with that, uh, you know, and be off those things as well. Maybe suggest some exercise and go for those walks with her, and encourage her to keep keep her body moving. I'd also suggest ready to cope is a really good tool that uh, the Centre of Perinatal Excellence runs. So just just Google ready to cope. And they send you an email every couple of weeks and just say, this is, what's, this is what might be happening for your partner. This could be happening for you. Just really kind of um, backs up what you're, what you're feeling. So let's move into birth support. Uh, so firstly, let's face it, birth is a ancient natural process. And a, a birth worker would tell you, your partner's body knows how to birth that baby better than she does definitely better than you do but absolutely better than she does and trust in the natural process is really important because it's normal to be challenged around this and that moves on to the next point which which is that we we know that childbirth is a physically demanding event there's no doubt about it uh, what's perhaps less recognized and this is where you can come in as a as a helpful partner is the mental mental challenge so let's delve into that just a little bit more. So on the on the axis over here, we've got the opening of the cervix. And this isn't to scale. Some of these might last longer and shorter, and, and this is just a possible birth. So we know that um, that as as labor progresses, the the physical challenge intensifies. So the contractions become longer and, and closer together. So this is this is where the physical challenge actually happens. All right, so if we were to move that onto the, the mental challenge, and let's just assume that the blue line is that her mental capacity, and when it's when it's tracking along with the, the red line, we're saying that she's on top of it. She's mentally kind of going, yes, I can I can do this, no problem. Uh, early labor, get some jokes in there. Yeah, it's a bit of exciting time because it's not kicking in yet. And this is where, you know, you're really getting geared up. So maybe some sleep, some food if possible, get that preparation um, beforehand. And then maybe she, she'll have her first kind of challenging contractions and she, she thinks to herself, oh, I can't do this, it's just just begun. And this is your opportunity to step in and say, hey, it's, it's okay, we're, we're doing well. I'll call the hospital, you know, just reassure her make some suggestions about how she can comfort her and get her mental capacity back tracking down here where it should be. Then you go, go off to the hospital, you arrive and there's lights, there's, there's strangers everywhere and this is where you're down the lights, you make that, that space as much as you possibly can like your, your own home, bedroom at home and you're you're telling it in, be, in between contractions, just drop your shoulders and slacken your jaw and, and things like that, because she'll tense up and that will just, her muscles will, you know, will not be able to handle it after a long period. So, and you're, you're saying, you know, we're getting closer to meet baby. 
all of these kind of affirmations that I'm saying, I suggest you you research some of those and and work out some things that you that that land well for you for you both. Uh, these are just suggestions um, that that might work. Now, at at some point during labour, your your partner will disappear into a, a trance state, a hormonal trance state. Now, this is a necessary process during labour, and this is where I introduce a concept around a, a birth support spectrum. So, in the beginning, you're kind of more engaged. You're kind of you, you know you're supportive with your words and and you're engaging her neo, neocortex. And at the moment, we're operating in beta waves. So this is our waking state. And that's the neocortex, the, the intellect, where our intellect is held. But when you're getting into the deep, what, what birth workers call labour land, active labour, it goes into a trance state. And that's where the reptilian or primal mind operates. That's where, that's where birth belongs. And that's the place that we have to kind of guard from interruptions. So just kind of an analogy is she's sleeping in on the weekend and you don't want to wake her up, but sometimes you still need to communicate with her. So you're speaking softly and don't ask questions that she needs an answer to. Like, you know, you're protecting that state of mind. She doesn't need to be woken up from this. And you're speaking slowly, calmly, and maybe you can still suggest new, new positions, things like that. So we go back to this mental toughness. Your phone rings, switch your phone off. Uh, maybe there's a sh shift change or, you know, you've been looking forward to the bath and she gets in and the bath's no relief. There's a wide range of, of these things are all just little suggestions of how her mental capacity might be impacted. There's a wide range of things that might, might happen. So maybe you're breathing her through the contractions and this is where you, you're not as engaging with your language. You're, that's it. You're doing well. You're amazing. You're amazing. Again, just suggestions. And then she's going to get to transition. Now, this is, this is a, sh a relatively short period in the labour, but she may even use language like, I feel like I'm going to die. I can't do this. And you, you can be acknowledging that and saying things like, you are doing this you can do this you've done this so far you're doing amazing you know just really trying to reassure her but but this is the the red zone an athlete might might say this is this is what we call hitting the wall so this is the wall of labor and that's why i would suggest at this point you kind of want to want to have a, a transition strategy in there or something so you want to discuss that in detail with your partner what about when you get to this point what am I going to be doing? Maybe there's visualizations. You know, visualizations can be really powerful if your if your partner's got a visualization mind. So, deep relaxation and visualization is really helpful. Talk to her about opening flowers. There's all kinds of um, good good information about that online. Uh, and there's a lot you can do to help. There really is. You know, you've got your physic physicality. You've got your emotional awareness of your partner. You are the best person to support her yeah, at this time. You know, you've got your and practical support, which I think a lot of us guys are, are used to, we know about, you know, the practical support of the, you know, installing the, the car seat or driving to the hospital or packing the bags. And I'd suggest that you actually do pack the bag, dads, because, uh, and three bags, uh, one for all the stuff that you want to make the place you're home with, one bag for you, dad, and one bag for, for mum, but she, she'll tell you what goes in it, but you pack it. So that if she wants some lip gloss or something, and you're looking in the bag and you're like, I can't find it, then that, that you don't want to have that situation arise. So you pack that bag. Um, you know, your physicality, you've got your hands, you can wobble and massage physical uh, kind of support. You've got your brain, which allows you to kind of intuit things that are that are happening you're involved in the planning and decision making during birth as well you might be you might be in, I, i've heard of couples that they set it up so that uh, the mother doesn't want to be uh, it doesn't want to be disturbed at all ever so he sets up he set up a situation where where he says okay i'm in charge you just come to me if you want to know something about doing something to to my wife so I think that's a, that's a pretty good 
uh, strategy. So I've spoken about the birth support spectrum awareness. Uh, I think it's important to recognise that as she goes into the trance, you've got to follow her lead and you've got to kind of, you know, intuit what she needs in a sense. So let's talk about hormonal awareness. I think we're all, you know, uh, during pregnancy, we kind of, or everyone knows oh, that the hormones are, you know, are raging, but it's interesting that, that your hormones are changing as well. But let's focus in on, on a couple of them. So oxytocin is, is the main driver of labour and love, and that's how the baby got in there. And, and doulas will tell you best way to get the baby out is a similar way to what it got in because it's all about that loving environment. Anyway, um, there's also endorphins during labour. Endorphins are great. They're our natural opioids. And it's the oxytocin and endorphins that actually take her into the, the, the necessary labour land trance. So you're going to experience, the more engaged you are during the pregnancy and post-birth, you will be expressing prolactin, which is uh, widely recognised as the mothering hormone and initiates and uh, continues breastfeeding. And you also, the more engaged you are, the more your testosterone will change. So they've done studies, real human studies, and when men have been holding their baby within 15 minutes, their, their testosterone can go down. So that's, that's a clearly, that's the universe saying, we don't want a, a testosterone charged male around, around newborns. Uh, so as blokes, we love the idea that we can have an influence on, on something, we can do something and here's, here's where it is. So adrenaline, we can carry that in. If we're fearful, in the birth suite, if we're witnessing something and you know we, we, we're really struggling with it, we get fearful. That's when our adrenaline uh, response, our flight or fight, kind of pumps up, and that means that we're you know we're in an adrenalized state, and then we can pass that on to our partner. And if we pass that on to our partner, then uh, like adrenaline, it isn't a friend of of labour. It's really it will slow labour down. So let's let's zoom in on oxytocin because this is this is the real key, actually. So it naturally increases during pregnancy, and it initiates. It's thought that the baby sends a oxytocin pulse to the mother, and it actually drives labour. It's actually what contracts the uterus. It's a hormone. It's a chemical that gets expressed in your brain, and it drives it drives things like orgasm. It's our love, it's our trust, it keeps us calm, it's connection. It's that thing when you just look over at, at your wife, your partner, and you just think, yeah, I'm so in love with, with this woman. That's oxytocin, you get it, you get it too. So how can, we, how can we inspire oxytocin? Even during labor, important to recognize that you can whisper something in her ear and she can get an oxytocin surge. But uh, during, during pregnancy, all of these things that you can see there, hugs, sharing a meal, you know, music, singing, dance, yoga, all of the things that make you feel good, that's oxytocin and, and you have it on tap. It's important to rem remember that. It's, it's fundamental and wonderful, it's a gift. So preparation, training and confidence. So that's, that's confidence to both of you. So how's your confidence in yourself? How's her confidence in her ability? her mothering ability, your ability as a father, you know, your relationship, these kind of things are what play on her mind uh, and, and, and your mind as well. You've got to build your confidence because as you build your confidence and knowledge, your fear will, will reduce. So let's go now to just a couple of quick points about uh, early fatherhood. So one of your major roles in those first six weeks is to facilitate mother-baby bonding, uh, however you can do that. So those first six weeks are crucial to, to getting breastfeeding really running well. And the more supportive you are of breastfeeding, the better, uh, the longer it will take, the, more, uh, the longer it will last, the quicker it will happen, and it's more efficient. So uh, if, if your partner is looking to breastfeed and you support her, it's much more likely to occur. That's a, the research is absolutely clear on that. There's a term called matrescence. Now that is the changes that she would go through and it, it's a similar word to adolescence. So there's hormonal changes, 
this body changes, just like in adolescence. And so she's going through an identity. She's gone from me to we, and so have you, but not to the same extent. The kind of hormones that she's running are, are, are quite uh, profoundly different to us. But not, that doesn't say that we're not, we're not running those, uh, those hormones too, just to a lesser, lesser extent. Support her mothering ability. Even if she's really confident, you just uh, you know, give, give her great feedback about what she's doing because that'll, that'll make things uh, go better. Recognise that you've got instincts in this space. You've got intuition. Your gut will tell you. And so trust that, you know, and trust, trust your own thoughts around parenting. Yeah, people can tell you all kinds of things. You can read things, but if it doesn't feel right, just don't, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't do it. Uh, patience, maybe one of the things I found, my, my partner and I took a while for her to trust me with baby, you know, his safety and stuff, which was tough. I, I you know, it was really important to me that I had his safety front of mind, but uh, it took her a little while. And, and this, is a, this is a common thing. That, uh, that trust is, is, has to be earned. Just surrender to the fact that you're gonna be coming second for a while. All of the hormones that she's got going on just actually put you second. And it's not her, it's got nothing to do with her, it's the universe or God, or it's the, it's the way that life and humans are set up. She's set up to nurture that baby, not you. So just deal with it, <laughs> sorry, but. <laughs> Arrange to take as much leave as possible if you can. You know, if you work for yourself, try to you know, work something out. Try and uh, work on your good and open communication. And recognise also that early fatherhood, actually fatherhood in general, is hard work. It's just harder than not having kids around. That's for sure. Uh, and so what's in it for you and the kids? This is what's in it for the kids. They just they, they just end up being way healthier, more, you know, their cognitive skills, their social skills, they, they don't take as much risky behaviour. If you're an effective dad, if you're an engaged dad, you know, you've got to be there and you've got to try and, try and um, get that attachment going early on, you know. So recognise your value to yourself. That is when you're, a, you're an engaged dad, these are all the, the great things that, that work out for you as well. You'll live longer. Dads live longer. So perinatal relationships are really important. So uh, your partner, you've got to you know keep up those um, those uh, communication channels. Your parenting styles. Uh, if you're expecting now, grab a piece of paper and get your partner to grab a piece of paper and just ask that question of yourselves: What do you want to repeat from your parents, and what do you want to not repeat? And then come together and have a chat about it, and that will hopefully start some some good uh, conversations. Some birth planning, perinatal planning, uh, you know, a postnatal plan. You know, uh, if your parents are coming to stay, uh, I've never heard that work out. But, you know, maybe if you've got a 100% uh, relationship with them, it will. But uh, if anyone's coming to visit, you can be the guardian of the space and, and just nudge them if they've stayed too long or if they haven't done the dishes or if they haven't vacuumed or something. You're the one to kind of say, hey, come on, um, it's your turn to cook or whatever. Uh, baby, now carve out your role, dads. What is it that you're going to do to build that attachment? If you're a working working father, there's something you need to be doing on a daily basis to have that connection and build that attachment. Uh, you know, there's nothing that you can't do. Help with everything, uh, your nappies, and and it's like anything. The first time you pick up a little baby, it will feel like it's glass. You'll just be so worried about it. But then after a couple of weeks, it's it's more like rubber. You kind of, it's not a problem. You just get really used to it. And the only way you're going to get used to it is to, to get into it and become engaged. Uh, so about yourself, patrescence is a thing because you're also going through a hormonal imbalance and and you know, so you've got to be true to yourself. There's no way you can support uh, anyone else if you're not supporting yourself. So keep doing your stuff, whatever it is you're into, keep doing it. Keep catching up with your friends, doing your community stuff. You know, join or start a dad's group, get engaged. It's really, really powerful to know other blokes who are going through this. 
if there's any opportunity of doing that, I really highly recommend that. And self-care is, is also about, you know, your physical awareness, doing some exercise, your intellectual, uh, those hobbies that you might be doing socially, who are you catching up with, what are you chatting about? It's an exciting time, you know, getting out and about is, is much better than, than becoming isolated. A, a study last year from November said that 20% of new dads felt totally isolated. That's a bit of a sad story, but um, so hopefully you get those networks and keep keep up your mates and keep doing your things. You got to look after your emotional well-being and also your spiritual well-being. You know that's what that's what makes us human and that's what keeps us going. Finally, uh, the final relationship that I would that I would kind of say is a really important one is your care provider. If you're birthing in a hospital, when you arrive, make sure you're the the wisest dude you can possibly be and, and, and take her a gift or something, or, you know, maybe a, some chocolates or a card or a scratchy or something like that just to, I don't know, set, set up a, a good strong relationship with that midwife because she's going to be there looking after you and just just trying to be the best version of yourself and uh, throughout that throughout that time. But that's a very important relationship as well. So I'd uh, I'd like to take some questions if anyone has any burning questions. Um, back to you, uh, ladies. Thank you so much, Steve, for that wonderfully informative and useful presentation. I think you've offered some exceptionally practical advice to our listeners this evening, and I'm sure they've got some questions for you. Um, if you've got a question for Steve, or you'd like him to expand on anything that he's mentioned, please just send your question to us via the questions panel in your control pane. You can type your question there and send it through. So we've got a couple already there for you, Steve, if you're ready for me to fire them at you. Um, so we've got one that's come through from Michael, who's very grateful for the insights as he's about to become a first time dad. And he's asked whether you felt very anxious going through the birthing process and what you could suggest specifically that he focuses on to stay calm and supportive for his partner. Yeah, yeah. It, it, one of the hardest things for me was the, I guess, um, almost mental anguish that you go through because as guys, we're normally, we're, we're geared to look after them and kind of protect them. And here they are going through a significant experience and you know, physical challenge, and we can't take it away from them. She has to be responsible for that. So there's, there is a fair bit of when you're witnessing that going on. It is, it is part of the thing you've got to be prepared for. Uh, so I, I tell guys that um, one of the things that that uh, you can kind of help you to relax if you're kind of feeling yourself getting adrenalised is maybe leave the room if if you need to. Just leave the room, take a few deep breaths. Take a few deep belly breaths are real, really handy. Um, just breathe into your belly. Or another one is breathing through your left nostril. Take your right nostril, close it. Breathe through your left nostril uh, half a dozen times. And deep breaths, and that will that will calm your central nervous system. Thanks, Steve. That's, that's some again some really practical advice. We might send them all to yoga. I think. <laughs> <laughs> as well as Nothing wrong with yoga. <laughs> some good nostril breathing there. Um, yeah. So we've got another, bit, again, a really practical question here from Jared. And I know that in the session you did mention packing that bag to take to the hospital. And Jared's asked what to pack specifically to take to the hospital, especially if the labour is anticipated to be a long one. What kind of things should go in that bag? Yeah. So. Um, so things for yourself. So uh, if you've got uh, like some muesli bars, because they're not going to feed you in a hospital, uh, and 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 you don't really want to leave for half an hour or something to go and get some food from a from a hospital cafe. So even if you've got something at home that you can just uh, like some the last meal you cooked. So in that last month, <laughs> maybe just pack up containers. So you have got a little bit of pasta there. Pasta is would be great um, to, to keep you kind of going, uh, going through that. Um, also, 
if if there's if there's a, a bath in the birthing suite, you might want to get in there as well. So take some swimmers with you, uh, because because you can't go in naked. She can go in naked, but obviously you can't. Uh, things to make yourself comfortable, really comfortable clothing, a change of clothing as well. Uh, I, I would take your phone, but don't look at it unless she's, um, yeah, uh, but you might need that for, obviously that's um, a thing we, we do take, but there is, the internet is full of, of great ideas around this as well. So just, just uh, Google uh, uh, packing bags for labour and and you will you will find lots of hits on that thanks steve Could, couldn't agree more just google it if in doubt um we've come to a question from david who's who's coming back to that um supportive perhaps leaning towards the more anxious side of things um so dave is finding the emotional journey that his partner is going on a little hard to navigate and um, he's wondering if you've got any specific advice on how he could be more supportive for his partner or some specific signs that perhaps he could be watching out for um, to note that anxiety, to see if it's increasing in his partner. Do you have any and advice on that one? Yeah, sure. So there is some great organisations who are, who are in this space. There's uh, Panda, Perinatal Anxiety and Depression Australia. They're wonderful. I actually went and saw, went, got some great help on their helpline, so you can actually call them up. I got some great help uh, from, you know, for myself uh, from Panda. There's also the Centre of Perinatal Excellence. Um, I guess without knowing, you know, the dynamics of the relationship and and kind of, you know, the specifics about the emotional challenge, I think communication is the fundamental important point and uh, and and reassurance and and kind of trying to you know build that idea that that you are going to be there that you want to be there that you want to help that you want to you know uh I don't know another thing might be to to try and discover things about birth that maybe you think she might not know so that you might be able to to kind of bring something to her and say, oh, I was looking at this and uh, what do you think about this? Do you, should we go for this? Or Because I think that's very impressive when, when you can show that you've done your own, gone off on your own and you've, you've shown the initiative to, to bring some kind of information, new information. Let's try this. Let's do this. So have you thought about that? Maybe that'll kind of um, give us some comfort, I think. Thanks, Steve. Um... We've got uh, an interesting question from Josh here. Uh, he says that at the moment he's doing the birthing classes online. Uh, obviously, face-to-face um, -face birthing classes aren't always possible right now. And Josh says that he's finding it really hard to connect with the content. And he says, "Is it just me, or do dads for da sorry? Is it just me, or?" Do dads just not connect that much before the baby is born? What's your opinion there? It varies. So it's uh, so I think there's two issues there. So not connecting with the content of of uh, childbirth antenatal education classes, and also the the not connecting with baby. Let's so let's focus on the not not connecting with baby. That's okay. But I I, I kind of sometimes I question this, and I wonder. You know, you you might. If you're thinking of baby when you're at work, if you're thinking of baby when you're driving, or any of those thoughts is some kind of emotional connection. Uh, maybe you're expecting that connection to be deeper, but it, it is as deep as it is. So I felt really connected because I was singing and humming to the belly. I was feeling kicks. I was involved, I was engaged, and I felt connected, but it, it is, it's fine if you're not. Um, a lot of guys even even say once baby comes, I really didn't kind of fall in love straight away like everyone says they do, and that's okay. That's okay. But I think it's it's about trying to to get that attachment going, getting involved, being with baby, uh, working with baby, you know, being being there and and seeing seeing your own baby. And that's that's when I I think you'd have to be mad if you didn't didn't fall for it after after a little while in that situation but i wouldn't i wouldn't be too worried about that you, you know each to their own 
it's fine that that's that's what's going on. But I would suggest that you get in there and hum and sing, read read a read a story to to the belly. And then if we talk about childbirth education, look, that's all right because it isn't actually geared for us. It, you know, uh, it, the childbirth education is, I think, um, it, it's the research shows that it's just not engaged. Actually, there's a federal government process at the moment. It's called Plus Paternal, and they've they've done a survey of 367 guys and also 100, 150 health providers. And one of the things in that is a suggestion of review of antenatal education to include dads more effectively because they're, they're really just missing missing a whole component that uh, that they could really be leveraging. I, I tend to think that dads are a, what I would call a sleeping giant of maternity care. If we can awaken, awaken guys, give them permission to be more involved and, and kind of have have a birth culture for dads that allows them to be engaged and and more more you know involved in this process then i think they could revolutionize maternity care because we are the best people to to help our partners um, because we know her so well one of the things that we have a weakness about is that we're we don't know childbirth we don't know what's normal so i would say to any of you first time expectant dads, if you haven't seen childbirth before, get a doula, please. Look up a doula, find a doula that you connect with with your partner, spend the money and get yourself a doula because she will, very importantly, show you what's normal. She will calm you down. If you're starting to get anxious and you're watching and you're kind of looking on, she will just say, hey, it's cool. It's, you know, this is normal, it's all right. It's, it's okay, go and take a rest or, you know, or." I'll take over the massage. I'll, you know, so doulas or independent midwife uh, for first time, absolutely, highly recommend. Couldn't recommend that uh, any higher. Thanks, Steve. What a wonderfully reassuring but also practical answer. That makes a lot of sense. Um, we've got a question coming from Daniel. He's asking about making new friends and he asks if you've got any suggestions. Uh, Daniel is a recent first time dad. He doesn't have time for sport anymore. And he says that his old mates don't have kids yet and they just don't get it. So any suggestions? Yeah, so that, that's kind of common. Um, uh, new, new dads with, uh, with their friends who, who don't have kids, uh, it, is, it is a common thing. Uh, that isolation I speak about, Daniel, um, uh, make time for sport if you can. You've got to you got to keep that up. That was one of the, the messages I think that is it is kind of important. But there is an organisation called Dad's Group, dadsgroup.org. They're a non-profit organisation and they've got a bunch of groups around Australia. And they so look them up online. Uh, their, their main interface is Facebook. So if you can if you Get, up, get onto there, you find out if there's a dad's group nearby to you. And I was, I was involved in a dad's group uh, in that first year. And I've since moved away from, from that dad's group. And since COVID has happened, we haven't been able to uh, connect with the new lot. But it's just, it's just guys catching up for a coffee and bringing the kids along, which is actually a really good environment to, to kind of settle into as, as a new dad. So I'd suggest, either starting a dad's group or, or looking for one near you. Thanks, Steve. And I probably might take a point to mention there too that the Fathering Project also has a lot of ways that we can help uh, people connect with other dads. Please do get in touch with us, Daniel, after the session and we'd, we'd love to chat to you more about whether there's a dad's group that already exists in your area. Uh, we can chat to you further about that if you would like some help we can try and connect you further, especially as your little one gets older and we can connect and connect you with other dads that have school age kids. So you might um, get to know a really great mentor through a fathering project dads group as well. So, just, um, and just on that, just quickly, on, on there is also uh, play groups. So there's a lot of play groups around uh, and it's becoming much more, I know it's, it's not a way of ma 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 meeting other new dads necessarily, but yeah, it's it. 
dads are more more accepted at these things now. And what I've really found myself once I don't know how old your your baby is, but once they, you can get them out and at a playground, that is it's such a conversation starter. I like I've never met so many um, so many people at, just at playgrounds. You just turn up to a playground, and if there's there's another dad there, you're talking to them within within five minutes. It's just it's actually a really easy conversation as well. Me. Yeah, an excellent suggestion. Thanks, Steve. Um, we've got one last question for this evening and it's from Anthony. Um, he asks, what personal development or self-awareness work can we all do as dads to prepare for fatherhood? What do you think on self-awareness? Self-awareness. Um, well, to prepare for fatherhood, I think, I think you need a lot of like I said, some patience. Um, Self-awareness for me is is meditation, but not everyone is into that or or likes that. But uh, no, I think just just preparing as much as possible w with your partner. Self-awareness around around fatherhood, I think, is a is a team effort. Because you're going to have to, uh, you know, bounce off your uh, your new parenting. You know, you're going to get used to this this new dynamic of your relationship. And uh, yeah, I think um, communication and and discovering things with your partner might be uh, a good idea. I think that's a great idea, Steve. The communication is key, as we always say here at the Fathering Project. So that's that's a wonderful pointer for the, the self-awareness work that we can do in our relationships. All of us can probably heed that advice. Um, yeah, and, and, and further, just on that, I think what I covered there about self-care, uh, I, I did go over self-care and I talked about the, the dimensions of self-care. And I think that is, that is a shortcut to self-awareness. So that was the physical, intellectual, social, and emotional and spiritual dynamics of your, of your whole uh, world. I think that that's that's about self-awareness as well. Thanks well, so much, Stephen, Steve. I'd like to say thank you very much on behalf of the Fathering Project for being with us tonight. I think your insights are so real um, and sharing your personal experiences for those preparing for fatherhood was very enriching tonight. Having gone through it three times myself, I'm thinking I wish Wish I could have had those resources from, from my partner um, in advance. So thank you again for sharing those insights. It's a pleasure. I wanted to thank those that have joined us tonight. Thank you very much for giving up your time in your busy world and life to join us at the Fathering Project. I wanted to mention that we have a, a very interesting podcast that is going live tomorrow night with Dr. Tim Hawkes. Um, as many Australian kids are heading back to school, we know that many are really facing a whole range of emotions, um, some anxiety and fear around uh, getting back to a new school norm. And others in year 12 are facing some sadness about uh, their role as prefects and captains possibly not being recognised this year. So a whole range of mixed emotions. And we hope that you can join us on our podcast tomorrow night. But if you miss these, they will be playing all weekend. So please check back at the Fathering channel. And we thank you on behalf of the Fathering Project. And we thank you very much, Stephen, for sharing with us tonight your insights. Have a good night, everybody. And we'll sign off now. Thank you. Good night.